So now we're back to the lightning talks again. So Alyssa is going to talk about face morphing. So <laughs> feel free to go. I mean, I don't know how you get from there to there, but yeah, I guess we're going to find out. Being a Alyssa. So good morning, everyone. My name is Alyssa. I'm a Python JavaScript freelance developer here in Singapore. So today I'm going to talk about face morphing. All the code here today was written in Python 2.7. Someone might get hub and SQ slash face morpher if you want to check it out. So our aim for today is we're going to answer two questions. One, uh, given two images, how can we create a morphing sequence from one image to another image? The second one is, how can we then create an average face from all those images? And I'm going to answer that in just four little simple steps. Step number one, the locator. For a lot of computer vision tasks, there's a really popular library called OpenCV. So I've just leveraged a lot of that. OpenCV has these hard cascade classifiers where you can quickly detect faces and eyes in an image. Um, but for this specific task, I've used STASM, and that builds on top of OpenCV, and it leverages on the face detection there, but it also looks at the peaks in a uh, gradient orientation histogram. What it basically does in the end is, if you input an image, it will output you 77 key face points in an image. So here you can see like the ends of your eyebrows, the ends of your eyes, the tips of your nose. Really distinguishable features are, you know, pinpointed. Step number two is the aligner. Our images are all going to come in different sizes, faces all in different locations, so we need to resize them to the faces, add any borders if it's too small, and then pop them all out into the desired output size for the morphing sequence. So this one's fairly straightforward. Step number three is the actual morphing. So to do that, if you remember in step one, we had all those key face points. What we have to do here is triangulate them, and there's a really popular technique called Deloitte triangulation. For the computer scientists in the room, this runs in 10 log in time. And in Python, there is one function call to do this using the sci-fi library. You just go sci-fi, spatial, .deloitte, pass in an array of the <coughs> XY points, and it will magically spit you out an array of triangulations. So each row will contain three indices, which will point to the corners of the triangle. So you have a really nice set of triangulated face mesh now at the end of the step. The actual warping though, I'm going to skim the mathematical stuff, but the general gist here is you have any three points in the triangle, you have another three points in the destination image. So from three points to another three points, there is an affine transformation matrix that you can easily calculate in uh, linear algebra. Once you have this matrix for a triangle, you multiply it from any set of input points and it will transform it to a destination point. So if you did it for every single triangle, it will just map it to um, its associated triangle on the destination image. At the same time though, we also have to do a bilinear interpolation. And that looks at its neighboring pixel values to determine its final color value. And the reason we do that is so we can have a smooth gradient between the triangle and the face, otherwise you get this like the triangulated face in this thing. So at the end of this process, what we'll get is mesh number one going to mesh number two. And with that, we can then do four, which is the actual four. We have our input face map, which is our starting mesh. We have our destination image, which we have our ending mesh. And you can imagine that from one point to another point, we will have a straight line. So we can create, as we can sort of locate as many points in between as we want, which means that we can create as many intermediate meshes to have this transition of start to end mesh. Um, so the morphing sequence is now, let's walk from start image number one to to the next consecutive image, and then you walk all the way through, all the way to the end image. So if you keep warping all the way, um, you'll get this nice morphing sequence, and I will demo that in this next slide here. So I have got this morpher and it's sort of morphing back and forth, 60 frames uh, at 30 frames per second. It's 
If you want to mull through more images, you can also just apply the folder image. Here I have Star Wars, and it's just <laughs> picking up all the um, image files here. Here are only JPEG and PNG files, and then it will just walk through all of them automatically, of course. Uh, if you don't want to have a video, you can supply, you can just put the plot option, and you can just plot it, or you can save all these individual frames to a folder. And you can have as many as you want in between. Here I just have eight to fit it on my slide, of course. The second question we wanted to answer today was, how can we create an average face? So it turns out we use the exact same three steps. We locate, we align, we warp the face. But they all warp to this one mesh. Um, and once they all warp to this one mesh, you overlay all the mesh together, and you create a weighted average so that you have this one new average face. So um, here you just input a folder name. You have faces with four images. You can supply as many as you want. I have one where I did 85. It actually came out quite nicely. The trick of this, though, is if the faces are not facing forward, it will look really, really funky and weird. So I'll have to fix that somehow later on. I just want to quickly jump over to the repository because I documented a lot of the stuff over there. Um, kind of zoomed in. So this is the phase morpher repo. As I've mentioned, it's built in Python 2.7, OpenCV, NumPy, SciPy. So the first part here is the morphing. You can supply the source and destination image or the image folder. I have a whole bunch of other options here where you can have a customized width, five number of frames you want, frames per second, save it to the folder, create a video, or plot it. Um, and the second part is to create average faces from all of the images in a folder, similar, uh, just by width high. I also have a blending here, which I didn't show. I'm still experimenting with that, so that you can blend a face that you finished onto, a, into onto another person, so you have like Sally or John kind of thing. Uh, and I'm experimenting with various blending algorithms in the folder. Haven't settled on one. So, here are the steps. I've just documented it here so that if you go to the repo, um, you get an idea of it. And this was one of the first things that I made when I created it, the John Malkovich, which was the very first slide I saw. <laughs> and yeah, that's just the one thing back and forth. This one here is just a jig in the repo. Uh, plotted it. And this one, this was the average basis. It's made out of 85 images. They're pretty high resolution images, so they came out quite nicely here. Mixed genders as well. Um, and yeah, you can generate a documentation. I will just quickly, very, very, very quickly show you. <coughs> Everything is located in this transformer folder, and they are broken up into exactly as I explained it, like the locator, the aligner, the walker, blender, plotter, whatever. Um, and I just want to give a shout out to a really, really nice tool. If anyone wants to build a command line utility in Python, there's this thing called docop. You just describe what, how you want your command line utility to look like, and it will consume all this and have it available to you as an array. Um, and these are just the key value pairs. So it's insanely beautiful and nice to use. Uh, so to consume it, you just go args with, which is something that the person passed in. So. I just hop back. That's all I have today. Thank you very much. So, any questions for Alyssa? Okay, okay. Oh. Her hand was actually the first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think quickly that the, uh, the pencil matrix uh, for doing the morph sequence, yeah. that's one matrix that, that deals with the entire, oh, with the triangle. triangle. So, how do you think? Uh, how do you keep the triangles together? That's why you have the key fixed points for seven. So they're always uh, detected at the relatively the same location as the same thing. But to the face, relative to the face, it's the same location. So you know from mapping this point to that point of the person's face. On oh, the mapping itself is It's happening. always the same, yeah. So we have we know which triangles to walk over. So they make the triangles the same together as they each. Sorry? You've got a separate template of triangles. Yes. Yeah. So it's stay together. Yes, it will stay together, correct. It will just stay together and you have a different transformation matrix to go over and create a morphism. Yeah.
Thank you, Richard. Uh, is there some tool available where you can calculate the metric, how far away two faces are from each other? Um, that's I mean, in terms of how different are they to kind of... Oh, how different? To, to get like a, a face recognition of the Indonesian. Uh, you can, yes, I think so. I didn't think of that, but I guess you can. If, but the thing is, your face point will look different if you have your mouth open or you're really shocked. So it might not be the best way to do face point recognition, but it could be a nice quick first pass, I guess, to detect from maybe round faces to long faces. Yeah, that could be a nice first pass. Yeah, you can do it though. Can you do the same without the black? That's my next thing. So the thing is, I'll have to create a mesh that goes outwards as well, all the way around, so that it can morph, say, an entire human body over. Uh, it's a bit more challenging, because I'll have to have the same points per human body. But yes, I would love to have that next. Um, how about the run time of your Sorry? Running time. Running time. Uh, it takes about one to two seconds for to, uh, to do one walk to another image. One to another, one to another. Actually, much less than that. Thank you. Let's see.